streets crazy. Rebels arose who were determined to carry the fight to Jerusalem. The Sicari. To the Sicari. Anyone who wasn't fighting the Romans was a collaborator and worthy of death. Many were slain every day. Alright, uh, Shalom, first and foremost, want to say, call hello, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Alright, that's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son. Uh, today we want to go into a scripture, um, probably the most used and most well known scripture in the world, which is um, John, the third chapter, and the 16th verse, John 3 16. Um, we want to go into it um, partially for our milk series. Um, we're doing a, a series of milk videos, but also. Um, you know, just going into the great depths, you know, the deep blue sea that is uh, John 3.16. Um, what we're going to do through the spirit and the power, of course, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, is basically break this scripture down and focus on uh, four key things that were said in this scripture that'll paint the picture very clear, vividly clear of what this verse is in fact in reference to, okay? Um, many people, such as in the Christian church, have the misconception that this verse is a reference to the entire planet Earth and all of humanity and mankind. Um, this is not true. And what we're going to do again through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is prove that. Give me John 3 and 16. This is John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Right, Red? That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son who the world enemy calls Christ. Yahweh Shai, read. That whosoever believeth in him uh -huh. should not perish, uh -huh. but have everlasting life. That's a heavy verse, okay? Um, And it's a verse that's abused in Christianity and underused and utilized within the world of Israel. So what we have to do is go into this verse, contextualize this verse, and get all the meat off the bone that is this verse. The first place I want you to go is uh, Isaiah the 45th chapter the 17th verse because the first word I want to focus on in this verse is the word world okay world that's where much of the misconception comes in regards to this verse is the word world all right read Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 uh-huh but Israel shall be saved in the Lord Israel okay Israel shall obtain salvation through the most high God Yahweh read with an everlasting salvation, uh -huh. ye shall not be ashamed, Red. nor confounded, uh -huh. world without end. So the nation of Israel is a world without end, okay? So the world that's being referred to in John 3 and 16 is the nation of Israel. Let's further prove this. Okay, real quick, I'm going to go into the Greek. The word there for worlds is Strong's G2889 and it's cosmos. And it means an apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government okay the key thing i want to focus in on there is government right let's go to isaiah 9 and 6 okay there is a government that is prof prophesied that will be established okay and yahweh shai who the world ignorantly calls christ came to usher in that government all right because he is going to be the um the ponchate or the ruler of that government all right read isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 uh -huh. for unto us is a salat for unto us a child is born for unto us a child is born right unto us a son is given uh -huh. and the government shall be upon his shoulder the government shall be upon his shoulder the government that should be established is the government of the nation of israel starting with the elect of the nation of israel right. okay the elect when you go uh when you deal with your local government whether it be on the national level or on the local level you, they have to go through elections in order for somebody to obtain office, okay? So the government is headed by the elect. 
Starting with the 144,000 under Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's who the Most High said to rule over this. Right, read. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, yeah. the Everlasting Father. That's Yahweh Shai, read. The Prince of Peace. Nah, that's Yahweh Shai right there. You see what I'm saying? He's the one that's going to rule over that government. That's it on that? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Luke 22 and 29. Okay? So, the world is in reference to the entire nation of Israel beginning at the government of Israel, which is the elect of Israel, who will firstly obtain salvation before the two-thirds. Okay, go ahead. 22 what? 22, read 29 to um 30. Luke chapter 22, verse 29. Uh-huh. And I appoint unto you a kingdom. That's right. So, Yahweh Shai is talking about a kingdom being appointed, okay? The government that he, that's prophesied is going to rule this kingdom, which is to come here on earth. Read. As my father hath, hath appointed unto me. Because the Most High Yahweh gave the dominion to Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai has his elect, all right, that he's going to have to rule and be joint heirs with him, okay? Now, the rest of Israel is going to be there, but you got the ruling class, which starts with Yahweh Shai and the elect. Read. It says, uh, that my father hath appointed unto me. That ye may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom. Uh -huh, that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom. Everybody is not going to all be eating and drinking at the table with Yahweh Shai. Okay, read. And sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Because that's what a government does. A government makes judgments. Okay. So the elect are going to sit on the thrones and judge the 12 tribes. All the 12 tribes are going to be there. They are the world. Okay. But the elect are going to be judging. They're going to be ruling. Okay, read. All right, that government, that governing body. Yeah, that's right. That's it on that. Oh, that was thirty. Yeah. Okay, go to Luke twelve and thirty-seven. Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-seven. Uh huh. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He cometh, shall find watching. That's the elect. The elect are going to be watching when uh, the Most High Yahweh sends His Son Yahweh Shai back here to the earth. They're going to be found watching. That's what the elect are going to be doing. Read. Verily I say unto you. That he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. They're gonna be, uh, uh, they're gonna be basically the first to get delivered, the elect, okay, and to partake in the actual implementation and the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven, as opposed to just being born into the kingdom of heaven later, and es and escaping the second death. Yeah, and yeah, and escaping the second death. That's also a key point that we got to go into. Um, that's it on that. Yeah. Okay, stay in Luke. Go to eighteen to seven now. Luke chapter 18, verse 7. Uh-huh. And shall not God avenge his own elect? The Most High is going to avenge his own elect, okay? Starting with the 144,000, read. Which cry day and night unto him. This is what the elect do. They cry day and night unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay? So all of Israel is not crying day and night unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Only the men of the Lord starting with the elect and the one-third. You see what I'm saying, read? Right. Though he bear long with them. Uh -huh. Though he bear, though he's got us here going through all this hell that we're doing, we're, we're crying day and night unto the Most High. Read. Keep going. Uh, no, yeah, all I needed was the seven verses. All right. Now let's go to Revelation 7 and 4, you know, to find out who the elect is going to be. All right. Revelations chapter 7 verse 4. Uh -huh. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Uh -huh. And there were sealed in 144 and a lot and hundred and forty and four thousand uh -huh. of all tribes of the children of Israel. Of all tribes of the children of Israel. So this is who the elect is going to be. The hundred and forty-four thousand of the nation of Israel. Twelve thousand of all the twelve tribes. That is who the elect is going to be. Okay. So the constitution of the government. You see what I'm saying? It starts with the elect. Okay. These are the people who are going to obtain. Lord willing, we be at that number, but we don't know who's of that number. But whoever the elect is are the people who are going to obtain the first salvation. Okay. And are, are actually going to be with Yahweh Shai and the angels again with the ushering in and the implementation of the actual kingdom of heaven. Then later, the rest of the nation of Israel will come through by being born through the elect. Okay. That's how it's going to happen right. in that order. Right. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. I sit on that. Uh, now, I want to go back to John 3 and 16 real quick before we go further, all right? Because I want to show you something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to further prove that that word world uh, is talking about um, the uh, uh, the whole nation of Israel. And then there's a specific, uh, specific uh, specifying of the elect that comes later in the verse, right, Read. 
John chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world That's right. that he gave his only begotten son. That's right. That whosoever believeth in him. That's the key thing. He loved Israel so much that he gave us an eligibility to escape the second death. Okay? By doing what? Sending his son Yahweh Shai. And all those that believe that Yahweh Shai is the Savior. Right, Ray? In him should not perish. Him should not perish. Of those of the nation of Israel, of the world of Israel, that believe that Yahweh Shai has been sent as a savior for us, shall not perish, meaning shall not uh, uh, see uh, the second death. Right. Okay, go ahead. But have everlasting life. Uh-huh. Well, that's it on that. But see, that's where it is. The elect are those who obtain that, all right? It's like this. It's like the NFL draft, right? You could declare yourself eligible for the draft, but that doesn't mean you're going to get picked, right. okay? All of Israel, all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are eligible to be draft picks by the most high, okay? Right. But everybody's not going to get picked. Only the 144,000 and the one-third is going to get picked. The two-thirds is going to get left out there and get reborn in the kingdom. That's the key thing we have to understand, okay? If this world... Uh, uh, it's talking about only the elect Then who are those whosoever shall believe out of the world All the elect is going to believe in Yahweh Shai So that doesn't That ideology doesn't make any sense Okay Now uh, Even uh, John chapter 17 verse well, 9 Yeah you'll go to John 17 verse this 9 This is John chapter 17 verse 9 uh -huh. I pray for them So Yahweh Shai said I pray for them Who is the them let's find out read I pray not for the world. So Yahweh Shah don't pray for all of Israel. He prays for them. Who is it them? Let's find out. Read. But for them which thou hast given me, for uh -huh. they are thine. That's right. That's the elect. That's who Yahweh gave to Yahweh Shai because they belong to Yahweh, the elect. He prays for the elect and the one third. Okay? Not all of Israel, the world. Okay? If that because right. that's the same word world that appears in John 3 and 16, which is cosmos. So he's praying for the elect of the nation of Israel and not all of the nation of Israel. Read. Right. So if the elect is if if the world in John 3 16 is the elect, then how then it's saying if that's the case, then it's saying he doesn't pray for the elect. Because it, it says, Pray not I pray not for the world. And he's saying that part part of the elect might not believe in him. That that just doesn't make any sense if and when you go to John 3 and 16. Okay, we have to rightfully divide the word of truth. Okay, and there's a lot of twisting now that went on in the in Christianity. Now people are twisting it up in Israel, which is a damn shame. Uh, that was it on that. Now let's go. Um, we're gonna continue on the word world, isolating that. We we just went from Revelation seven and four. It said the twelve thousands of all the uh, twelve thousand of all the twelve tribes of Israel. Now I want you to go to Romans nine and four. Romans 9 is a very key thing to understand in this whole John 3.16 breakdown also, right? Now we dealt with the world and the elect, right? Let's go to uh, Romans 9, read 4 to 5. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, right, and the glory, and the covenant, uh -huh. and the giving of the law? Now it says the, the covenants, right? It said the covenant. That's the key thing, the covenants. Now when we read the uh, meaning of the word cosmos, which is uses the word world in John 3 and 16, it says an ap erroneous arrangement, a government, a constitution. You see what I'm saying? Uh, a constitution or a covenant is the, is the same thing, okay? So the covenants pertain to the Israelites, read. And the, and the giving of the law uh -huh. and the services of the Most High uh -huh. and the promises. So that's a service. When the Most High sent Yahweh Shai into the world, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, that's a service, okay? The services of the Most High pertain to the nation of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans exclusively, read. Whose are the fathers, and uh -huh. of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. So Christ came for those who are Israelites by their flesh, okay? Who can trace their patrilineage back to the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? So that takes all of that, it, it, it it's uh, pertaining to the whole world, Totally out of the equation. Okay, read. Who is all, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. The nation of Israel overall is blessed by the Most High Yahweh forever. Okay, that was it on that? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Amos 9 and 11. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Uh -huh. In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David. So the Most High is going to raise up the tabernacle of David. That's what the elect represents, the tabernacle of David. All of Israel was not represented in the tabernacle of David, but there were members of all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel that were a part of the tabernacle of David. 
Okay, and that's what kind of made David's tabernacle unique to others because only him, Saul, and Solomon ruled over the entire nation of Israel. Okay, read. That has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. He's going to close the breaches of our nation, meaning he's going to repair us as a nation. He's going to restore us as a nation. And he's going to do that starting with the elect and the one third. Okay, read. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Exactly. That's it on that? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 65 and 9. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 9. Uh -huh. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. So, the Most High said he's going to bring forth a seed out of Jacob. That seed is representing Yahweh Shai, read. And out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountain out of judah right out of the tribe of judah an inheritor of the mountains meaning the the ruler the kingdom of all i mean the ruler that is going to rule over all kingdoms of the earth which is yahweh shai read and mine elect shall inherit it and my elect shall inherit it because the elect are made joint heirs with yahweh shai okay so it's going to be yahweh shai and the elect okay under yahweh and then the rest of the nation of israel which will be reborn through the loins of the elect all right and this is a uh key point right here and it says and my servants shall dwell there mm -hmm. who are the servants of the lord that really represents all of israel right okay read because it's making a distinction between the elect and the servants and the servants because yeah, we just focused and isolated the word world so now i want to focus on the word love Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 15 uh-huh only the lord had i had a delight in thy fathers to love them the lord had a delight in our forefathers of the nation of israel to love us okay read and he chose their seed after them uh-huh even you above all people as it is this day. He loved us, he chose us, and he placed us as an entire nation above all people on the planet earth as it is this day. Let's go to 7 and 6 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Uh-huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. We, Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, read. The Lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. That's right, read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people upon the face of the earth, read. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you. Wait, he set his love upon us, right? So he loves the nation of Israel. The love of the Most High, Yahweh, is exclusively, exclusively pertains to the nation of Israel of Israel, not all nations on the planet Earth, okay? I'm going to say Moses was talking about the elect, right? <laughs> well, uh, everything's the elect now, which it is about the elect, okay? Right. Let's not get it twisted. It's about the elect. The elect and the one-third are who is going to obtain salvation, all right? That's period. Right. But ultimately, meaning in the kingdom, okay, when it's all said and done and when eternity is established, all of Israel is going to be loved by the Most High. Go ahead. Right, and if I could say this too, um, shit slip my mind but um oh yeah you know the lord is not what false balance man. that's right so he shows hate and he has hatred towards two-thirds of our people that are wicked you know but he he has more love because if if he had more hate than love he would destroy their spirits because he has the power to destroy their spirits yeah, he do what but, he want. but ultimately he loves them that's why he's going to raise them back up in the kingdom yeah, so don't get it twisted. It's all about the elect and the one third That's right. on this side. That's right. But ultimately, because of the Lord's love, he's not going to destroy their spirits and he's going to bring them back. Yeah. That's all brothers is saying, man. Yeah. And, and I want to make this point, too. And let's not forget to make this point about because uh, a lot of people say, well, if if uh, if the most high, if oh, yeah. The, yeah, if the most high loved them, why would he destroy him? Well, hey, the most high let Yahweh Shai get crucified. The Most High said there's going to be members of the elect that are going to be martyrs for her, for, for his sake. Right, right. So that doesn't make any sense. You see what I'm saying? That you know, it, it, it's that that one that little minuscule point a lot of guys is making. It, this it, it, it's a two edged sword because again, again, Yahweh Shai was crucified. You're going to have martyrs of the elect. Okay, so the Lord, there's righteous men that die. You see what I'm saying? That that's not like it doesn't happen. Not like he don't. Not like he don't love you because. Uh, he's allowing you to get, be, be destroyed or get put to death for his name's sake. You know, it, it is scripture say he even turned his back on Yahweh Shai. Yeah, say, well, that's why Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, said the prophecy that his forefather David has said when he was on the cross. Allah, Allah, why have you forsaken me? God, God, you know, uh, power, power, why have you forsaken me? You see what I'm saying? That's what he said. Because he's like, damn, I'm here. This really is happening to me. I can't even believe it. Even though he knew damn good and well it was going to happen. Just, man, it's like like, like one of these niggas on death row, man. 
they sit there for 25 years and they know they're going to die. Then the time comes and it's like, damn, I'm, I'm really finna die. You know what I'm saying? That that's a, that's a heavy pill to swallow, man. You see what I'm saying? But the whole point is the most high, it, you saying that the Lord hates the two thirds just because he's going to destroy them. That's a very finite outlook to be looking at because you're only looking at this lifetime. Because in the next lifetime, he's not going to destroy them. Okay, they're going to live out a full life and be translated. Right. You see what I'm saying? They're not going to see death. Ain't nobody going to murder them. And they're going to reign. And all the nations are going to bow down to them, even the two-thirds. Okay? Now, the elect is going to be reigning with Yahweh Shai. It can't nothing change that, man. Right, the tower of the flock. You know? But the two-thirds are still going to be there. And they still going to be ruling. And they still going to not ever have to worry about anything. You see what I'm saying? But go ahead. Where this we at? Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse, uh, I mean, yeah, chapter seven, verse eight. Uh -huh. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath. Right. He loved us and he made an oath with our forefather, starting with our forefather, Abraham. He made an oath. OK. And he loved us. So he has to do the most high got to do according to his word, period. Right. He made an oath with Abraham that we was going to obtain salvation as an entire nation. So we going to read right? which we had, which he had sworn unto your fathers. Had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So he's going to do the same thing to us out of this thing. All right. It's going to be a little different method. All right. But it's the same thing. He he made an oath with our forefathers. So he's going to deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. Okay. Right, the who, one third that you is. You know. Yeah. Still starting with the elect and the one third. Then the rest of them is going to get born because hey, they're going to have to get destroyed too because they join themselves unto the heathen. Okay, they 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 were conformed to the image of the beast. All right. Um. Uh, so like, give me First Kings ten and nine. First Kings chapter ten verse nine. Blessed be the Lord thy power, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. The Lord loved Israel forever. Matter of fact, real quick, this is talking about I believe. Let me make sure it's First Kings ten. I'm going to show you something too, which is kind of deep, and I never thought about till right now about this whole thing. 1 Kings 10 is uh is Solomon, I believe. Solomon get up. Solomon's getting put on the throne. So coincidentally enough, this is Sol read that again from the top. The fact that this is in reference to Solomon makes this whole thing that much more deeper because we know Solomon is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. Go ahead. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 9. Uh-huh. Blessed be the Lord thy power. Was delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel because the Lord loved Israel forever. So the Lord set Solomon on the throne as a show of love that he had for Israel, okay? Which who came back as Yahweh Shai, who is our Savior, who is our King, who, who the Most High Yahweh ordained, who died for our sins. So with that being said, when you further analyze this, Yahweh Shai being set on the throne is an ultimate show of love to the nation of Israel, which coincides directly with what? John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is the same guy that was set on the throne here in John 10 and, I mean, in 1 Kings 10 and 9. Okay, go ahead. Uh, therefore made he the king to do judgment and justice. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Because he loved Israel. Let's go to Hosea 11 and 1. So, but the point, going back to the Christian outlook and aspect of this, the point is... We showed here in Deuteronomy 10, Deuteronomy 7, De uh, 1 Kings uh, 10, and now we're going to Hosea 11, and we're proving that love, the love of the Most High God, Yahweh, only, as always, exclusively pertain to the nation of Israel, not all nations on the planet Earth, not the whole world, not Israelites and a few people from other nations. It's exclusive to the nation of Israel, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Go ahead. Uh, Hosea chapter 11 verse 1 uh -huh. When Israel was a child Then I loved him Ooh, I and, loved him Right Reed And called my son out of Egypt Exactly When Israel was a child When Israel had not been a nation For that long Okay what happened The Most High called us out of Egypt And that salvation that he gave us from Egypt Was an ultimate display of love towards us And the salvation of us out of this modern day Egypt And this modern day Babylon And setting us up in the kingdom Okay which ultimately And uh uh when it's all said and done, all of Israel will be there, all right, is another ultimate show of love. Okay, let's go to Malachi 1 and 2. And it's funny that you got guys in Israel that, that, that have been teaching the same thing for years, 
and breaking these same bread and butter scriptures down, the first scriptures you learn when you come into the truth, and now they want to change the truth. Okay? Uh, let's go to Malachi 1 and 2. Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. Uh -huh. I have loved you, saith the Lord. So the Most High said, I have loved you. Who is he talking about? The nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Read. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Our people say, well, how has the Lord loved us? Look at this oppression. Some people may say, how does the Lord love the two-thirds? He's getting ready to destroy them. Right? Read. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? We br uh, twin brothers with Esau, right, Read. Saith the Lord, yet I have, yet I love Jacob. So the Most High loves Jacob, the Israelites. Not just a portion of the Israelites, all of the Israelites. Read. Uh, verse 3. Oh, uh, we ain't gotta go into okay. we ain't gotta go into verse three because we got the point. But we know what it says. He said he hates Esau. Does he only hate a portion of Esau? Like he only hates the Jew. He only hates the so-called Jew. You got guys that are actually out there teaching that, you know. Yeah, but only, yeah, yeah the, oh, it's only the it's only the Jewish people that stole our identity. Wicked you feel me? They're, they're the wicked Edomite. No, he hates all of Edom and he loves all of Jacob. What proves that? He's gonna enslave and exterminate all of Esau, and he's gonna lift up and cause all of Israel to reign over all the other nations on the planet Earth. That is what proves he loves Jacob as a whole and hates Esau as a whole. Okay. Uh, let's go now to um, Isaiah 43 and read one to four. Isaiah chapter 43, verse one. Uh huh. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. So so Israel, the nation of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans belong to the Most High, Yahweh. Okay, read. When thou pass it through the waters, uh -huh. I will be with thee. That's right. Wait, when we pass it through the waters, this is talking about our deliverance out of Egypt, our passing through the waters, right? He was with us during that time. Now watch this, read. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Uh -huh. When thou walkest through the fire. That's talking about this deliverance. When we walk us through the fire, which starts with the elect. Only the elect and the one third is going to walk through the fire out of this place. Read. Thou shalt not be burned, uh -huh. neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's right. Read. For I am the Lord thy power, the Holy One of Israel, uh -huh. thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, uh -huh. Ethiopia and Se uh, Se Se Seba for thee. That's right. Read. Verse 4. Yeah, read the 4. Since thou was precious in my sight. So the nation of Israel is precious in the sight of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Read. Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Uh -huh. So he said, What? I have loved thee. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai loves the nation of Israel as a whole. Okay, read. Therefore will I give men for thee uh -huh. and people for thy life. That's right. So the Lord gave men for us and people for our life. He gave Yahweh Shai for us. He gave Yahweh Shai as a ransom for us. Okay? The fact that he sent Yahweh Shai shows that John 3 and 16, that that world is talking about all of Israel. He sent Yahweh Shai to give us eligibility to obtain salvation. Now, again, all of us are not going to obtain salvation, okay? But the elect and the one third is. And that is a display of love from the Most High. All right? Now, let's go right, to. If I can say this, the whole, the elect and the one third is going to be saved from the destruction, the second death. The whole nation as a whole is going to be saved out of the hand of our oppressors. That's right. So we're not being oppressed that's no right. more forever and ever and ever. That's right. Because because that's the thing, too, what we got to look at. When we were coming out of Egypt, it wasn't, um, you know, we were saved from the hand of our oppressors in Egypt. So all of Israel walked out of Egypt, okay? But then a lot of them people died in the wilderness and they didn't all go into the land. But that wasn't a, a, a ultimate cataclysm that was taking place during the destruction of Egypt. That was something that pertained exclusively to that region of Mizraim. You see, so we came out of there because we were saved out of the hand of our oppressors. This thing is a global cataclysm that's getting ready to happen, which is the second death. Okay, so everybody is it doesn't deserve being saved from the second death. Okay, but Israel as a whole, as a nation, the Most High is going to save us out of the hand of our oppressors because the two-thirds are going to be born in the kingdom and rule over their oppressors. Okay, now give me second Ezra's of uh, 4 and 23. And then we're going to go on to the next point of focus in John 3 and 16. You said what now? Uh, second Ezra's 4 and 23. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 23. Uh huh. For it was not my mind to be curious of the high things, uh -huh. but of such as pass by us daily, namely, wherefore Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen. So, Israel, so, so Ezra is saying, look. 
what I'm thinking about, what's on my mind, what I'm worried about is how, why are we being, you know, oppressed by the heat? That's what I'm worried about. What we, the day-to-day -day struggles that we have to deal with as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans under oppression under these heathens, chiefly the so-called white man, the devil, right? Wherefore, Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen, and for what cause, cause the people whom thou has loved... The people whom thou has loved. Israel is the people that the Most High loved, right? Is given over unto ungodly nations, and why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught, and written covenants come to none effect. That's right. So, Ezra is wondering about why the people that the Most High loved are being trampled down by the heathens, and why these covenants and these laws are coming to no effect, okay? But the point there is the Lord loves and made covenants and a law with the nation of Israel, and ultimately, the Lord is going to save us out of their hand, is going to make good on the law and the covenants and the promises, okay? But the point is that all of that is something that exclusively pertains to the nation of Israel, not the whole world, and not just a certain segment of Israel, it pertains to all of Israel, okay? But we understand that only the elect and the one-third are going to be saved from the second death, okay? Which is hey, the nobody's saying uh, go, you, nobody, we're not sitting here saying, oh, go be buddy-buddy and, and yoke up with Two thirds or yeah, hell no. wicked ass niggas. We're not saying that. We're just saying ultimately the Lord loves Israel, or he wouldn't he wouldn't preserve their spirits and bring them back in the kingdom to rule forever. Exactly. Period. That's what's being said. They're gonna die on this side. That's right. They're, they're, they're wicked, and okay. they deserve death. And they deserve death. They hey, there there's hate towards them, but there's love towards them. Ultimately. That's yeah. It. And, and I'm gonna prove. And I'm gonna prove to all of y'all that go out. Everybody that teaches on the street corners. Guess what? You have a degree of love for the two thirds. You know why? Because Leviticus 19 and 17 says, You shall uh, not show hatred to your neighbor, you shall surely rebuke thy neighbor. So you go out here, you telling these jakes that the, what they're doing is wrong, that they're going off, that the Lord is going to kill them for what they do if they don't stop doing it. And guess what? you showing love to them when you do that. That's period. Love is an action just as hate is an action. So that is an active display of love when you rebuke these jakes who are going to hell off. An active display. And moreover, we don't know who the elect in the one-third is, too. And let's make sure we have that clear. Guys are acting like they know who the elect is. Oh, this only pertains to the elect. Well, who, how do we know who the elect is? Okay? You see what I'm saying? That's ridiculous. So guys got to get it together, man. Okay? And stop making excuses. Okay, now let's focus on the part of believe. Okay? Because it says, Whosoever shall believe it in him shall have everlasting life. Let's go to John 12 and 46. John chapter 12, verse 46. Uh, read to 47. Go ahead. I am coming. I am. I am come. I am come a light into the world. So, Yahweh Shai has come as a light unto the world. Okay, what world? That's the same word again, cosmos. So, the world is the whole nation of Israel. Yahweh Shai is a light to the nation of Israel. Read. That whosoever believeth on me, whosoever of the world, of the nation of Israel, believeth on Yahweh Shai, read, should not abide in darkness. Shall not abide in darkness. Only one third in the elect is going to cleave to the light. Okay, read. And if any man hear my words and believe not. Okay, if any man of Israel, any man of the world of Israel, hear these words and believe not, because we know the elect are going to hear these words. Right. So this can't be just talk. The world can't be in reference to the elect. It's got to be to the whole nation of Israel. Read. I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He came to save the world. And how is he going to save the world of Israel? Through the elect and the one third. All of the world ain't going to get saved, but enough of the world is going to get saved. Okay, go ahead. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Have one that judgeth him, which ultimately what? The most high you how read. The word I, that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Shh, the same, because when Yahweh Shai was on the scene in that period of time, he ain't come to judge. But the same shall judge him in the last day, because when he comes back, that's when he's coming to judge. Right. Read. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. That's right. He gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. Yeah, that's cool. That's it on that? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Acts 13 and 26. So the believing also, the only people that who, who can believe in Yahweh Shai, that Yahweh Shai, who the world enemy calls Christ, is the Savior, are the Israelites. He came in as a light to the world, as a light to the Israelites, okay, as a nation. Go ahead. Acts 13 and 26. Uh -huh. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. Read. Children of the stock of Abraham. Children of the stock of Abraham. Read. And whosoever among you feareth the most high. Whosoever. This is the same thing as when he said, 
I, uh, 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 for God so loved the world that whoso whosoever shall believe it in him, okay, shall not perish. It's the same thing we just read in John 12 and 46. He came as to a light in the world, okay? Read. To you is the word of this salvation sent. So the word of this salvation is sent to those that believe of the stock of Abraham, of the Israelites, okay? So believing in who the world calls Christ pertains to Israel. The love of the Most High God pertains to Israel. The world that's being referred to in John 3 and 16 is the world of Israel. Now, I want you to, again, matter of fact, we don't even got to get that again because uh, I was going to get Romans 9. Because, again, Romans 9 is a key. It, 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 it basically goes in in every aspect of this verse to prove the point that it's all about Israel. Um, let's jump to the everlasting life portion. Um, let's go to 2 Maccabees real quick. Okay, because it said that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's go to 2 Maccabees 7 and 9. 2 Maccabees chapter 7 verse 9. Uh -huh. It says, and when he was at the last gasp, uh -huh. he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. Okay, takest us out of this present, present life. Okay, the two thirds are going to get taken out of this present life. Read but the king of the world shall raise us up uh -huh. who have died for his laws. Uh -huh. Who have died for his laws. The martyrs. That's it's really talking about the martyrs of the most high. Right, read. Unto everlasting life. That's right. But who were the laws given to the Israelites? You see what I'm saying? The Israelites are going to get rose up into everlasting life. Whether they be uh, uh, not tasted the second death. Whether if they be martyrs or whether they tasted the second death. They're all going to be raised up to rule in that kingdom. In everlasting life. Okay. Um. Let's go to, uh, uh, we, we ain't even got to get that slug. I have Romans again. Because again, Romans 9, like, it plugs into every part, but I think I think we got that. All right, let's go to Luke 10 and 25, though. Read 25 to 28 in the book of Luke. 10 and 25? Yeah. 25 to 28. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Uh-huh. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So, hey, the lawyer asked you how it shall. Well, what do I got to do to obtain eternal life? What, what is it? Right, read, which is synonymous with everlasting life, read. He said unto him, what is written in the law? Uh-huh. How readest thou? And he is, and he answering, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, uh -huh. and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and, and thou shalt live. This do, and thou shalt live, right? Basically, follow the laws, because the whole law is hinged on loving the Most High, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, matter of fact, let's get Romans 9 real quick, 9 to 4 to 5, because we have to remember... Who was the law given to? Who were the covenants made with? And this is showing us who has who has eligibility again for the everlasting life spoke about in John the third chapter and the sixteenth verse. Go ahead. Romans nine and four. Uh -huh. Who are Israelites? Uh -huh. To whom pertaineth the adoption right, and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law. So the covenants and the giving of the law pertain to the Israelites. Okay, so those who can obtain eternal or everlasting life would have to be physically patrilineally. Israelites, okay? Not the whole world, Christian church. Read. In the service of the Most High and the promises, uh -huh. whose are the fathers of whom concerning the flesh, Christ came. Again, Christ came for those who were Israelites concerning the flesh. There is no way around that. Read. Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Let's go to Acts 1 and 6 to close it out. Let's see what the disciples uh, were seeking from Yahweh Shai. Which is the fulfillment of prophecy. Read. Acts 1 and 6. Uh -huh. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Restore the kingdom to Israel. That's what it's all about. That's what the kingdom is. The restoration of dominion to the nation of Israel. Starting with who the world intimately calls Christ, Yahweh Shai.